I share with you now from the New Testament, from Paul's letter to the Philippians. I share with you from the third chapter. Hear now these words. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory. By the power of that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our gracious God, in these moments, may the words of my mouth, may the thoughts, the very meditations on our hearts and minds, may they all be acceptable to you, you who are today and forever our strength and our redeemer. Amen. There's an old story about a missionary, a missionary who was coming home to America after many years of serving, working overseas. It was actually before air travel, so you know it was a few years ago. So the missionary, of course, traveled across the ocean on a ship. On that same boat happened to be the President of the United States. While on board, the President, of course, received all kinds of attention and special treatment, while the missionary was, of course hardly noticed. When the boat docked on American shores, there were cheering crowds and a military band, red carpet, banners, and media all who were there to welcome the president home. But not a single person that day showed up at the docks to greet the missionary, <clears throat> and so he just, of course, slipped off the boat unannounced. Feeling some self-pity, and even some resentment, the missionary found himself complaining to God. But in the midst of his complaints, he suddenly felt God's gentle reminder come to him in words that were clear. But my child, you are not yet home. Consider for a few moments your definition of home. If I ask you to questions such as, where is home, and what does your home look like, I'm guessing you would likely clarify for me the location, possibly address, of your current house, and then you might describe the type of house it is and what it looks like, perhaps why it is special to you. But if you and I hold God's word as true, then ultimately we are led to conclude that no place on earth will ever be our true home as God's children. In Psalm 39, David prayed, Lord, let me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. Repeatedly, the Bible describes life on earth as temporary, transitory type of an experience. This place, earth, is not our permanent home. It is not our final destination. In a sense, we are just passing through. We find in the Bible such terms as pilgrim, Alien, foreigner, stranger, visitor, and traveler, all used to describe people of faith. For those of us who claim allegiance to God, living on earth, 
any place on earth is like living in a foreign country, a place that is not and will never be fully home. So why is it that, that we are aliens, that we are foreigners, strangers on earth? Well, it's because people of faith are inherently different. To have faith is to have a different perspective about this life than a non-believer. It is to have different priorities and to embrace a different purpose for our lives. To be a person of faith is to think differently about this life and to live differently in this life than those without faith. For many live as enemies of the cross, says Paul. Their end is destruction. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Believers understand that identifying ourselves as citizens of heaven means there is far more to life than the few years we live as flesh and blood. Here in the United States, There are those people who have moved here from other parts of the world to work, but they retain their citizenship with their home country. These individuals sometimes refer, we refer to them as aliens, but they are required to carry a visitor registration card, known by more common terms as a green card. That green card allows them to work here even though they are not citizens. As Christians, our homeland is heaven. And even though our temporary job assignment is earth, and it is an important assignment, those of us who grasp and live this truth aren't as easily seduced by earth priorities, such as having it all, being popular, wielding power. Biblically, God is often very direct in warning about the dangers of living only in the here and now and adopting the values, priorities, and lifestyles of the world around us. To fully adopt this world and its values is to reject our heavenly citizenship. Perhaps we Christians should carry in our wallets like something like a spiritual green card, reminding us that our true citizenship is in heaven. For example, what if you were asked to be an ambassador, an ambassador to a foreign nation? You would certainly need to already know or at least learn some, to some extent the language. You would need to adapt, accommodate some of the new customs and cultural differences in order to be polite and respectful. As an ambassador, you would not isolate yourself from the people of that country. Because to fulfill your mission, you need to have contact, relate, connect to them. But suppose you become so comfortable with this foreign country that you fell in love with it, actually preferring it to your homeland. Your loyalty and commitment as well as your behavior would change. And your role as an ambassador would ultimately be compromised. In 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote, So we are ambassadors for Christ. In Peter's letter, he said, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that waged war against the soul. Ultimately, our home is not earth, not the United States, not Ohio, not Chagrin Falls, but heaven. We are here on a temporary assignment. We are there for eternity. Think for a moment about life today for those of us living in the western part of the world and in particular the United States. Yes, there are those who might consider these to be challenging times. Yet still, compared to much of the world and even much of our own history, clearly our options are fairly good. And because Our capitalistic society surrounds us with so many fascinating attractions, enjoyable experiences, and coveted luxuries. 
it is easy to forget that the pursuit of these things is not actually the meaning and the purpose of life. Life is not about having all that we desire, all that we can acquire. Life is a trust. It is a temporary assignment. In 2 Corinthians, Paul also said, We look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. We are not meant to be completely content, completely satisfied at home in this life, for this is not our final home. The faithful on this day, we refer to them as the saints, are those who know they are ambassadors of Christ. They treat this life as a temporary, important, but temporary assignment. And they know their permanent address is located in heaven. For many, including the two we especially remember today, they are no longer foreigners in a distant land. They have received their final and permanent assignment and have returned home. But for now, our assignment is to continue as God's foreign ambassadors. So when life is difficult, when you feel overwhelmed with doubt, and wonder if living for Christ is worth the effort, if it's worth the sacrifice, remember, you are not yet home. Upon death, you won't be leaving home. You'll actually be going home. On this All Saints Sunday, we give thanks to God for the faithful who have safely arrived home. We also give thanks for Jesus' promise. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. We give thanks that our time on earth is not our complete life story. Our final chapters are written only when our temporary ambassadorships are over and our heavenly citizenship is fully claimed. So come, all of you foreigners and strangers, all who identify yourselves as ambassadors of Christ and who desire above all else to someday return home and be numbered among the saints in heaven, you are invited to this earthly meal of remembrance and celebration. Our Lord invites all who follow him to come and to know his saving presence in the food and in the drink of holy communion. And in our coming, Jesus also invites us to anticipate that that great banquet that awaits all who conquer death and who safely arrive home.